If you're watching this video, it is likely that you know more about AGA's frame synchronizers than I do. Let me just introduce, we have FS HDR, we have FS4 and FS1X. And some of these units, they can take multiple channels for um, managing or, or working with the video signal. These, um, the FS4 and FS HDR can also bundle them together into a 4K channel. But in this case, we are working with them in, in HD, basically. Because with these two units, having four inputs and four outputs makes them perfect to like have a channel each on this unit. So in fact, what we have done is the first four channels here that I can select on the camera selector, camera selector, is basically selecting which of the channels in the FS HDR that I'm working on. And now we are over to the FS4. And finally, we have one channel from the FS uh, 1X up here. And if I move beyond that, you see I have more channels, but in fact, we have a lost connection blinking because these are not anywhere on our network. They are just brought into this to show you that we can basically continue with multiple channels far beyond the ones that we have today. I even have a second page of cameras. So just imagine what that means. If you have an OB truck with like eight of these, then you would basically be able to adjust 32 channels by paging through on a single rack control duo. Okay, so that's like the concept of selecting channels. This is like a camera selector. Now, the cool thing is that you can gang control these. So if I select channel four and channel one, on the FS HDR, if I, and I select both by pressing and holding. Now I can do gang control of these. So if I turn this knob, you'll see that I'm adjusting the red gamma value to the same on these two channels. I can even do that across units. But let's first take a look at how the panel works with these. And by the way, me telling you that these first four are from this one, and the next four are from the other one, and so on, that really doesn't matter. For the user, this, these are just channels available. However, you will see that actually if I go to the second one, this one is currently like not available. And if you see these two in comparison, you may notice that in the one case, the color corrector is off. All right, so if I go to this one, maybe actually what I could do would be to enable these two channels. And now you see it says multiple because they are a off and an on value. So if I just turn it on for both, then you'll see that also now if I gang these together and if I turn this knob, Ah, I should actually see that. Let me just see. Okay, let's just turn this on. Why did it not? Okay, we're good. Yes, it is all on. And I turn this. I don't know what went wrong. Maybe if I rewind the video, I'll see. But anyway, you see the gang control across these two units right now because I just pulled up these channels. And I could even do the same on the... Let me just see. That would be the FS1 X... And if I turn these knobs, you see, I now do that across three units. I'll come back to showing you, proving that this is in fact what's happening. But if you look at the, the layout of this one, we have the camera selector, we have the parameter adjustment up here. And um, if you look at these buttons, these are the menu basically. So we are on the home menu right now. Here you may find some redundancy. Some things are broken out that are also find in the inner menus. So here we have legal and key values. If you briefly take a look across these, then you'll recognize easily from your knowledge of the frame synchronizers what is going on here. We have uh, another page here with parameters that we can adjust. Going to the program color corrector here. Moving on to HDR setup. And notice it says, please change trans, uh, trans on homepage. Okay, so if I go to the homepage, there's something I need to turn on, transform. If I turn this on to like, let me see probably need, um, if I do this one, one of the uh, color front engine, and then I go back to the HDR setup. Now you see that I actually have some values here. So it was telling me that I was in a mode for my unit that did not uh, allow for showing anything here. Okay, now let's move on. We have more menus here for HDR just actually that would be better if we had it turned on. So let's just go to the Color front engine once again here on the that page, and then we see parameters here. We have HDR color corrector here. We have scale and uh, region of interest, and then format settings. Now there's a smart little feature down here called color only because there is a pre and a post um pre and like a pre-show situation and a live situation. And in the pre-show situation, you may want to adjust things like format of the video inputs, but 
if you are in a live scenario, it is likely you want to cut out those things. So we have made a button here that you can turn into color only mode. And if you do, then the menu is now reduced to down to, to uh, six elements, namely those related to color settings that you may want to adjust in the live situation, right? So that's just like a filter for our menu, essentially, by pressing that one. Okay, so you, you'll see the same. It's just these menu pages were a subset of the other ones. Um, I just want to mention that we do have presets as well. So if I go to presets here, you see these presets, and they are recalling presets in the unit. So it's actually per unit presets. So if you know how that works in your um, frame synchronizers, then whatever camera you have selected here, belongs to a unit and th those are presets recalled on that one. So I won't go into details with that here, but now I want to show you the web UI we have um, from one of these. This is uh, the web UI of the FS HDR. We are currently on channel number one. Let's just go to that one and let's pick the color corrector here. So if we go to the color page on the FS HDR, we see these values and um, the red green and the blue gain black and gamma they are available here so what do we have here we have the red gamma value so what we should see is that this slider is going to move as i'm turning this knob okay it does does it also work the other way if i move the slider does it change on the panel yes it does because when sky integrates with devices we always go two ways if possible so that's of course the mark of a quality integration. If I turn this knob, I'm adjusting green gamma, blue gamma, and so forth. So you see it's happening right here in the web UI, as you would imagine, expect, and so forth. Now, let's go to the gang control, because if I move to channel number two, and we just verify on the second channel here, that we are, in fact, adjusting the gamma settings for red. Yes, we are doing that on the second one, and, um, then if I hold this one down and now I'm ganging these two together, it says multiple because they are different, the values here. But now, again, notice the red is now on 0 0.20. And now I go back to camera number one, or channel number one, and you'll see as I am scrolling to that, I think maybe I need to, no, no, wait. This is, okay, let me see. We have a lot of open tabs here, but there we go. We find it right here. This is the red gamma. And now, as you can see, I grab this slider. It now says multiple again, because of course it doesn't work the way that if you pull it, the slider in this UI, it won't also move over to the second channel. But now if I'm moving this, you'll see they are now synchronous again, 0 0.16. And that is exactly what you'll find if you move in here. It also says 0 0.16. Okay, so that's ganked control across these channels. I wanna show you at the end of this video how we can do the same on the RCP. So this is obviously useful, great for a rack display in your OB truck, in the back, whatever. But this unit is usually sitting in front of an operator. He might have them associated with multiple cameras. But of course, these being color correctors, it's possible to also make them appear as a camera to this one. So that's what we have done. We are currently connected to the FSHDR once again here. And um, we even made a function for the, um, for the joystick. So if we go to the first channel, I want to show you how that works. If that's basically just mapped onto the proc amp, uh, to, to the proc amp, amp gain. So you see the iris joystick is simulating iris by manipulating the gain of the proc amp. And if you turn the ring, you'll also see it's manipulating the black of that channel, like if it was a camera. So that's the closest we'll get. But other than that, you'll find it's the same way it works. It has a menu. We have the home menu. We have the ANC AFD menu. We have proc amp. We have gain and gamma. We have black. And we also have a second menu page with HDR setup, adjust gamma and HDR lift format, and even a third page here. Now, just like on the right control duo, we do have a color only function that reduces the menu to now uh, nine pages basically. And uh, if I have this turned off, I have like 14, didn't I? Yes. And those are including those settings that are likely to not be useful during a show. So what I want you to understand is this is typical Skahoy. The communication with devices is shared between these two. They are basically built on the same code. So if it works on this one, it can also work on this one configurations is how do we map those parameters down onto the knobs on the RCP and on the Rec Control Duo. And in this case, we have a particular 
thing in mind, namely that you want to do gang control across multiple channels, while this operator will be much more focused on a single channel, bringing it up as a camera on the screen in front of him and adjusting it just like if it was a camera, because probably he has another three RCPs sitting next to him that are actually adjusting cameras. Thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on social media and subscribe to our newsletter for updates. You can find all those links in the description below this video.